Hi everybody, this video is about how to upgrade your 2009 Mac Pro to be competitive in 2020 and yeah first thing you need is to get an SSD or a USB drive with Mavericks on it because the upgrade file uh, which upgrades your firmware from 4.1 to 5.1 runs perfectly on Mavericks Every, any other later operating system has some kind of quirks with it so make sure you have the upgrade file and the proper operating system in this case Mavericks do the upgrade first and when you confirmed you have 5.1 system then you need to collect these parts which I'm just showing skizzers for example the thermal paste some alcoholic wipes the thread locker which I showed the blue one A43 obviously the pair of CPU the X5960 oh sorry 5690s a plier a narrow headed plier the thermal pads which I'm showing right now which you're gonna need for the heat sinks because contrary to other channels and other persons doing these upgrades I'm not deleting the CPU in my opinion and I'm an engineer well trained and doing this for years so in my opinion it's not worth it to make a mechanical damage to your CPU or a thermal damage because either way when you delete the CPU you're gonna damage it and even so if it works afterwards the lifespan of the CPU is going to be less as you can see I just draw down on a piece of paper the layout of the CPU tray which I prepared taken out of the unit and then using this T-shape tool which helps me to count the rotations first you place the tool into the hole and then make a note how the T-shape top of the tool um, looks like and then count to three so you do three full rotation first and the, you, use, you use a crisscross pattern to loosen the screws uh, gradually and making sure you not unscrew one screw fully first and then when you have all four screws uh, loosened by the three rotation three four rotation then you count the left uh, the rotations left so usually most of the time it will be about nine rotations as you can see this one was 9.25 rotation 20 obviously the point 25 is, is a quarter of a rotation so you can imagine how it works and then go to the next and count from obviously I did an initial three and then did the remaining and counted it in my head so it became a 9.25 or so it, this is usually the case the tightings of these screws usually similar so you're gonna see it is all around 9 and above and just make note about these values because in a case you would need to repair your CPU board for example you, your CPU would die eventually this stuff die because obviously these are 2019 uh, 2009 uh, made CPUs and the whole unit is made in 2009 so it is quite old already so eventually if you need to me make any adjustments or fix uh, it will be very useful to have the rotation count uh, noted and put it away so that's why I make a note about it and obviously you can see the old CPU has no heat spreader the metal part on top of it and because I'm not removing the metal part from the CPU I bought for this unit uh, that makes a difference uh, you can actually measure it with a special tool how thick is your CPU with and without the cap 
so I did that and it was a 2 millimeter and 2.2 millimeter difference and did the math I'm not gonna bore you with that that meant that when I'm gonna replace the CPU with the one having the cap on it I definitely don't want to do nine rotations and above but if you have a CPU tray and you want to screw the screws and it came to be nine and above you need to tighten it only three rotations three full rotations but I'm gonna show that as well and when it comes to that I'm gonna explain it why exactly what you saw the parts and tools I'm gonna have some links in the video description where to get those um, let's talk about the thread locker many doesn't use it but it's a bad thing not to use it and it's a bad habit because obviously there are some kind of frequency uh, how the ventilators spin inside your uh, heat sinks and that makes uh, small movements let's say vibrations and that vibrations even though it is small eventually gonna unscrew your screws and then you're gonna lose memory channels you're gonna lose contact with the cpu pins and then your computer not gonna work so that's why i'm using the thread locker which makes sure that the screw stays and uh, stays as i set it up uh, during the upgrade so that's an important part obviously the thermal pods which i showed as well are important because the difference between the thickness of the cpus uh, gonna make a difference of your heat sinks contact with the thermal uh, sensors on the daughter board which i'm gonna show also so yeah the thermal obviously the skizzers are there to cut stuff the plier is here because what you just saw in the video the small plastic part which keeps the heat sink ventilator and the sensors uh, connected has to be removed so you can move the connector itself freely and to the side which makes it easy to reinstall it when you place the CPU into the socket and then the heatsink over it otherwise it would not connect with the connector on the daughter board you're gonna see it why it is important so you just remove this plastic part with the plier that's why I use narrow head plier and place the connector to the side easily accessible with your finger and also there are these alcoholic wipes 70% which makes sure whatever you wipe down gonna dry fast and will be clean properly especially these times when you need to be sanitizing everything but I did this since I kind of invented it to use these swab wipes which is normally used to clean surfaces pre-injection but obviously it is just perfectly fine for a use like this so you just clean the heat sinks from any remaining uh, thermal paste and also you can use these alcohol wipes to clean the thermal pads on the side the pink ones which I'm gonna show you and why you would need to clean it, it obviously you want to apply fresh thermal paste on the heat sinks center and obviously you want to install the thermal pods which I mentioned before over the thermal pods which I'm cleaning right now in the video and if it is a clean surface it's gonna um, stick to it properly if it is not then it's not gonna stick and also it's not gonna conduct the thermal thermals properly so you prepare the heat sinks like this remove the plastic thingy con uh, holding the sensor and ventilator cable and also cleaning the surfaces from any previous thermal 
glue and uh, thermal paste and the dust and when it's ready I'm gonna apply the thermal pads that's where the scissors come into picture you actually have to use the scissors to cut a slice of this thermal um, pad which you can find readily available on eBay uh, you can see it's a little bit shorter than the heatsink for CPU B and then the other one you're gonna see it's a little bit uh, longer so you can combine the two so you, you, you just cut one and then use it and you can see I'm gonna cut the second one and what I cut off from the second one I can use on the first one to actually make up the difference when you apply this thermal pad make sure the top part is in line with the old thermal pad because if you place it and it or it hangs out uh, you're not gonna be able to install it properly it's gonna just fold or stuck on the side of the CPU board uh, but yeah just make sure it's perfectly lined up with the outer side of the old thermal pad and that's gonna make your life much more easier obviously these thermal pads third party thermal pads has ceilings on the sides which you have to remove because if you leave those plastic uh, protectors on the ther new thermal pad it's gonna prevent your Mac Pro to sense temperatures and it's gonna spin the fans like crazy the same goes if you not apply these thermal pads on the 2009 Mac Pro's heat sinks because then the thermal readings going to be also crazy and your Mac Pro gonna try to fly actually spin all the ventilators like crazy because the Mac Pro won't be able to sense the temperature of the heat sink and that's gonna overdrive the vents so that's why I'm using the thermal pads obviously and also the uh, CPU board the daughter board has to be cleaned those are the sensors which I mentioned before those are the ones connecting with the thermal pads which I installed just a minute ago so make sure both of them are cleaned properly so that's gonna make sure your thermal readings are right and also one thing is better with the 2009 Mac Pros uh, compared to the 2010s and 12s that the thermal readings gonna be much more uh, precise and also the thermal uh, values of your CPU gonna be much better because the old design has a full-on uh, copper uh, layer on the bottom and not just the size of the CPU's top part but the size as you can see is spreading all the way on the bottom of the heatsink which means more copper which means more heat spreading which means better thermals and uh, longer life and the other thing is additional with the 2009 Mac Pro now I'm apply applying the screw fixing liquid on the four base of the screws you can see it just apply as much as you can see in the video not too much because you don't need that much so back to the CPUs if you delete the CPU you can damage it by using the mechanical removal tool which practically forces off breaking off the top of the CPU that's basic physics if you force something it can cause micro tears or you can do the adding like extra heat to soften the glue in between the metal part which I'm just about to clean as you can see and between the die that's also not a good idea because in the process you might just make also heat related uh, tears and um, breaks in the die in the CPU die so that's why I'm using intact the CPU and rather make an effort of doing this 30 minutes extra preparing everything and using as designed and manufactured in the factory uh, then breaking it or 
to alterations which is not designed by default for example with the CPUs Intel engineers designed these CPUs very well and they not expecting you to remove the lid Apple ordered them Apple ordered the CPUs for their Mac Pros directly from Intel designed without the cap so but it is up to you you can buy the deleted CPUs and then replace them in a year or two because they're gonna die on you or you can follow this video and you can have a unit which gonna live more than you because I rather build something to last a lot of years than build something to last for a couple of months or a couple of years then die on me and then uh, I would need to buy another stuff anyway as you can see I'm spreading the thermal paste evenly which I suggest you to do so as well because this is really sensitive the pins as you can see on the CPU board are really fragile and small and if you're not spreading the thermal paste that means there will be a, an extra added thickness which can be spreaded by the fact that you tighten the screws in in a crisscross pattern but I rather do this uh, in in advance so making sure it is evenly spreaded and then play around with the screws without and having any issues and keeping the rotations as I'm gonna explain further on then forcing it because sometimes if you have taken thermals placed on the CPU it can press it can um, give pressure on that specific point and the pins on the CPU board can touch themselves and uh, touch together and short circuit it so that's not something you want to have yeah sometimes you have to clean off the term paste of the gloss because you don't want to spread the term paste everywhere, everywhere else than the CPU contact points you can see I'm just aligning the CPU there is a cutout of the CPU stop and there is a cut there is some small plasticky part fitting in that cutout so you just line it and put it there same goes with the other CPU just before you place it into the socket make sure it is very well cleaned there are no dust mites and particles or any residue in the socket or on the bottom of the CPU and now you can see how much of the screw fixing liquid I'm applying on each of the screws it's not much it's practically just a really, really small amount and you also can see uh, Apple did that back then uh, there is still residue of the old one that's why I cleaned it with alcoholic wipes before to make sure that the old residue is not gonna uh, just come off after I screw in the screws and then loosen my contact with the heatsink as you can see you just fit your finger under the plasticky part and then make sure you insert the black connector first and then align the heatsink by aligning the screws first and then you can follow your notes so as I mentioned most of the Mac Pro 2009s gonna have the same or similar result at around the 9 rotations some of them can have 8, 8.5 eight but those are rare and when you tighten it you just first insert your T-shape uh, tool and try to practically unscrew it and when you hear the clicks that means that the screw clicks on the bottom because it reached the end of the thread so first you try to unscrew it and then when you hear the click a couple of times you can make note of that location and just uh, do three full rotations because that's how the math works so when you have nines noted with the original Apple CPUs you're gonna use three rotations initially with the replacement Intel CPUs because of the extra thickness and then when you have done it in crisscross pattern obviously you're gonna follow your notes and you're gonna add the remainder of the rotations 
so 3 equals 9 or the other way around 9 equals 3 rotations, 3, 3 full rotations and the fraction part like the 0 0.25, 0 0.3 uh, gonna be identical so with the new CPU again you do 3 full rotation because I had uh, 9 full rotations and then add the 0.25 so the quarter rotations or the almost half rotations if you have 0.5 for example and then you just make sure you check all the screws and that's the little bit tricky part because sometimes you may even need to add a little bit more rotation but it is usually around that uh, 3.5 and 3.25 rotations which needs to be done on each and every of these um, screws and in a crisscross pattern. I'm showing it on the side obviously. This goes the same. You just follow the T-shape from the from above so you can count the rotations. So if you had nine rotations initially with the Apple CPU now you're gonna have three with the Intel CPU. If you would have for example eight initially or even seven those are really rare units but if you have that just reduce it so for example if you had eight rotation you make two two and a half tops first if you had seven somehow you're gonna make also two rotations at least because it's gonna let you and you're gonna feel it when you hold it with your fingers only that if it needs a little bit more but never over tighten it because if you over tighten it you're gonna lose out memory channels or the CPU won't be recognized properly that's the best case scenario and if you really over tighten you can actually bend or break the pins or even uh, burn your daughter board your CPU board because they're touching them uh, each other and then short circuit them so if you would have any question just shoot you can ask me in the video description I mean in the comment section it's not that hard obviously first time when you do it it's gonna take you like one or two hours because you wanna make sure everything works perfectly but if you have the routine it can be done in an hour or 45 minutes stops with everything replaced as you can see it shows up perfectly the Geekbench score I did in the registered 64-bit uh, Geekbench 3 it is quite comparable with the dustbin so I would say it is not that hard but if you feel that it is more than you're capable of for example as I advised in the, my 2010 upgrade video you have to make sure you test your CPUs and every parts before you install them in the macro because the macros are not really kind to having faulty parts and they are just not booting so it is this is really hard to diagnose diagnose those po uh, faulty parts so if you are comfortable to buy those stuff and you have the other computers for example a workstation to test the parts like in this case the CPUs then go ahead use all tested unit and follow the video and you are good to go or if not you can buy a lot of sellers doing this upgrade on eBay you can choose someone who sells it deleted version or not I would suggest to go with a seller who is not deleting the CPU to avoid any further damage and to make sure your unit is gonna live long so that would be all. If I miss something, let me know and see you in the next video.